702. Hello, hello everybody on the call and welcome to Nicole. I wish uh, I wish we were making introductions in person, but um, so have to do for this month. It's so nice to see you. Your hazing yeah. takes place when you're in person. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> No, thanks for joining, Nicole. I know you're out of town. We appreciate it. Yeah, sorry about sorry about that. And hopefully, I hope you can all hear me. I know my internet is like a little bit spotty right now. So, oh my god, I'm glad. Um, yeah, nice to meet you all. And not in person, but hopefully next month. <laughs> so we met every possible person. This is it. This is our this board. Call. Yeah. This is our board. Wonderful. So that takes care of the first agenda item. Um, and then onward to approving last month's minutes. Did anybody have any questions, comments, concerns? Do we have any motion? Okay. Go ahead. Oh, uh, first, motion to approve minutes. Am I allowed to say? Okay, I second that. I don't think we're good. We're good. Yeah. Okay. Are there any members of the public who would like to speak? Seeing none at this time. Yeah. We're moving on to new business. Katie, thank you for agreeing to uh, offer our icebreaker question this month. Uh -huh. um, I'm going to go with what is the best is that a thing that happened to you? No, 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 I knew. No, I knew. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. What is the best thing that happened to everybody last week? Just last week. Last week. I know. <laughs> the best thing that happened to us last week. Yeah, I'm thinking what was yeah. your last parameters, week. Katie? When does the week begin and end on <coughs> Sunday to Saturday? 12.01 a.m. to 11.59 p.m. Okay. But I mean, is that the you know, daylight savings? I mean, the standard. I don't even know which time. Yeah, so I think whatever, whatever. Approximately a week. We won't How about that? <laughs> I can go first. Time call uncapped. Um, and the best thing that happened to me last week was my kids came home from sleepaway camp. Which I can't believe I'm saying when they were little I would have given many millions of dollars for them to go away. But now they're a fun age and I'm very sad when they're gone. <laughs> I have luck. I just don't do great with little kids. So now they're all older and I really miss them. That's funny. That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. The minutes reflect. Yes. <laughs> many millions. Yes. 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 For everyone viewing. Oh, no. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I love my children. The same. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to Um, last week we got home safe and sound from our big trip to Prince Edward Island. Ooh. Mm. Yeah. It was uh, yeah. So it was wonderful to get home. It was wonderful to see the dog. Sammy missed her dog very much, but. We had a wonderful time visiting Ann World. And um, we were watching Ann with an E. We're very slowly working our way through because it's much more mature than some of the previous Ann things. And uh, she's very excited. She's like, I think we're seeing that. So that was great. Yeah. What was the weather like? Mm -hmm. Oh, it was great. It was great. I was like 72 every day. Oh, and then like the, the oh, I mean, you forget with that kind of humidity over the oil was like 65. Like they don't have like mm -hmm. huge temperature discrepancy the way we do. Mm -hmm. um, the, for most of it was 
beautiful, perfect blue skies when we left the last two days. We had some drizzle. And if we did drizzle, that would have been, it was great. Susie has to look at her calendar. I have been looking, you know, <laughs> you know <laughs> that's, I have to say, last week was a, not a great week. Um, so, I mean, I, the most memorable thing was we had to put our dog down. Oh, no. And we had him for seven, oh, 17 years. I'm so sorry. 17 years. We got him when he was eight weeks. Oh, so my kids' entire childhood. And I was like, there's nothing that was good last week. Oh, no. like, oh. Okay, so the memories? The good. memories. So I, I did. I yeah. posted. This is my, my little, my guy. I don't know if you can see that oh oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, he, that was when we were watching the super bowl 17. Uh, this was for a few years life. yeah his for, uh, yeah. yes and he, he was and, and he was really good for it with my son who's autistic and so when my son would have meltdowns he'd just come and just lay just lean right into it and he always needed to do mm. that i mean he wasn't trained but he just yeah. needed to do that so it was a lot it was very emotional and just a lot of, you know, remembering the good times. <laughs> yeah, looking through all of the old photos, I'm yes, sure. Yes, yeah, yeah, I was doing that. So, I mean, that's memorable. It's not happy. We had great happy memories of him. But, um, yeah, last week, I'm sorry, overall really sucked. So. <laughs> how is your, how's your son doing then? Is he doing okay? Well, he's 19. Or not, actually, he's not 19. He's 21. <laughs> Wow. Okay. So, yeah, my kids are uh, 21, 25, and 32. So they, you know, they, my oldest one was a teenager when we got him. And, um, but the other two, that's all they re really remember is life with, yeah. with Cody. So that was, that was a challenge. It's hard. But, you know, they're adults and, you know, they're actually handling it a lot better than I am. I was a wreck. I was crying off and on. So, I'm sorry I couldn't <laughs> uplift the group, but yep, that was no, that was my thing. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for listening. <laughs> I was in New Mexico all last week with nice. my husband mm -hmm. and two adolescent daughters. Mm -hmm. uh, we were in Airbnb for the first four days in a. Uh, somewhat rural area, um, Chimayo, in between Santa Fe and Taos. And so we were gone for seven days. We tried to do like a completely different thing every day. Um, and then the last two days we spent with um, an aunt and uncle of mine in Rio Rancho outside Albuquerque. And I hadn't seen them in about a dozen years. Um, I was very close to them as a child growing up. We all lived in Long Island and all the cousins got together. And so uh, I realized that I never, I never really spent any time with them one-on-one -on -one, because there was always like a house full of kids and the other grown-ups. And I was a kid, I was, I was so much younger. So, you know, they were big, you know, all powerful adults uh, to me and to be able to sit across a table with two people that you know I, I, I have work friends who are older than they are mm -hmm. and and that gap that age gap uh, mm -hmm. shrank a lot um, and, and so it was like really kind of getting to know somebody for the first time a, a group of adults and um, it was a mixed bag, actually. <laughs> it was one of my, I wouldn't say it was like the best part of my week, but it was one of my favorite parts of my week. Yeah. And I think it was, um, it was a, a gift to be able to have that um, experience um, at this point in my life. Um, but you also hear, you know, you sit around, you tell stories and whatnot, and you hear the, the, the adult perspective on the, your childhood memories, what was really going on. And um, wow, yeah, I mean, 
that I even thought that's very interesting that you know everything was always great and harmonious and then you find out you know these siblings aren't talking to each other and this one's mad and that one I was like wow thank you for keeping that out of my awareness yeah <laughs> I guess, you know, and then it's also like, wow, that's, that's it feels so normal. Um, anyway, so that was a, an unexpected kind of bright spot in my reading. Very interesting. That's just so funny because I'm going to see my aunt and uncle in Placidas, which is down the road from Rio Rancho next. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know, maybe some more family secrets will be revealed. Uh, well, do you communicate <laughs> I'll with keep them more often than once every dozen years? I, yes, we do. But okay. I haven't been down there in probably 10 years. They come up there. <coughs> it's hot. We'll, keep them. we'll see them in their natural environment. All right, cool. You want to play okay, Nicole? I, Obviously, yeah, I can go. I can go. <laughs> getting selected to the board was your highlight, but what else yes. do you have? <laughs> Definitely, that email was a little like great touch. Um, yeah, no, so um, I, I, I mean, I have to say, um, so yeah, I'm here in, I'm in South Carolina. I'm on Hilton Head Island, which um, we go with my father-in-law, um, and. Probably, like, I mean, it's always like a little bit of a struggle to travel with my young children, <laughs> but they were actually troopers on the plane, which was great. And then, um, probably the best moment was last night. We got, we got there yesterday, so last night after dinner, um, we walked over to the beach for you know, first time of the trip, and you know, we were still in the clothes and everything. We just got off the plane and all this. Um, but I have a one year old and a three year old. Um, and so they saw the ocean and they were like, oh, you know, you're not going to get, you know, sand in your diaper and all this and all And they were just like, no, they were both just in the surf, like, immediately. And, like, just in, my daughter was just in her dress, just like, she, and she was just like a mermaid. It was like sunset. It was beautiful. It was just like this beautiful, like, image. So it was totally worth all of the strife of having to pack up all that stuff and get it on the plane and deal with cranky toddlers, like, you know, four of us and the three seats on the plane and all. All that, so it made it all worth it. <laughs> That's really good. I'll 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 follow that one because I was also in South Carolina. Oh wow! In Lake Norman, so nowhere near where you are, I don't believe. But um, it was a last minute ish trip with my Pittsburgh cousins. They go down there every summer for a week and rent a house on this massive lake. Um, so it was fun. It was good to see them and get on the boat with the kids and watch them fumble around on the back of the boat on those inner tubes and water ski and stuff. So it's a nice little getaway. It was also good to get back because, man, when you're from Colorado, that humidity is so Oh, God, yeah. So. <laughs> Ooh, I can't do that. Yeah, it was, it was great on the boat and inside. <laughs> yeah. But it was fun. I mean, it was a highlight of the week for sure. So last but not least. I feel like I have a very unremarkable week. <laughs> um, I will say the best part that I could think of was making some homemade, like basically otter pops, but with a little like reusable things. Um, my daughter and I made some homemade like yogurt pops, so that was kind of fun to make them with her and, and oh, that's make fun. them. Mm -hmm. um, but then they actually turned out really good too. So oh, good. <laughs> it was kind of fun. But it's nice to make. And they're always fun to make. <laughs> um, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we made vanilla and chocolate um, in the, the like, chocolate ones we made with keeper instead of yogurt mm -hmm. so they have a little bit more of a sour taste but then they have the sweetness from the chocolate so they taste, they taste really good and they, they turn out really good. they kind of are a little bit softer so they, they're hard to like they kind of melt really easily so I had to really kind of make sure that she wasn't making a huge mess but um, but they're fun and they, they taste really good so they turn out good and it's always nice to have it Thank you, everyone. I, that's it was fun. Everyone, do we have a volunteer for next meeting? I'll write it down now. Would someone like to come up with a fun, light question to ask? It doesn't have to be like or heavy. Yeah. I feel like it might be up, but I can't remember. <laughs> 
Thank you. Remind me the date. It'll be August. Nineteen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And the next point of new business is strategic planning. I so that's for me. I wanted to update. I don't. I put this on because I don't remember if or when I updated the board on this, but um, we are. Uh, I've been working with. Um, my boss and Sandy Cedar, who's done some strategic planning with other departments. Mm -hmm. This library has not had a strategic plan. I don't actually know when, so mm -hmm. it's been a minute, right? And uh, it needs to happen, and it'll kind of be an in-between if any of you have done strategic planning. You know, it's generally kind of a, a, a drawn-out process. You would do community focus groups and things. This will be a little more insular in that sense, but I think it'll be good for staff and the library to give some direction um, and, and we'll do it five years out. So it, it'll be on, um, we'll do a day uh, with my leadership team here plus a couple of other staff members and Jamie who I invited from the board. So the board will be effectively a part of this too. Um, on, it's in September. Uh, we'll do a day of this and that'll kind of formulate uh, a plan for us for the next five years um, with some staff input. It won't be finalized that day. Uh, that After that day, I'll take some materials back for staff here who aren't there, who weren't there to have some input on that um, and as far as that goes. So I'm looking forward to that. I think, you know, it's something we need to have. I would love to do, you know, a full-blown strategic plan, but that's just not the cards and I can't really wait for something like that. So. Um, I just want to update the board on that. You know, obviously, there'll be more to update you with um, after the fact, but that'll be September 11th, I think. Um, and then the next one. That's it, unless there's any questions about that at the moment. It's just a quick update. Can you say anything, John, about some of the sources that will be referenced and putting together the strategic plan? Um, I can tell you the sort of the method that Sandy uses. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a, called appreciative inquiry. Mm -hmm. And it, something I, I wasn't too familiar with, but she gave me a book on it, so I've been kind of looking through that. Um, it, it's really a way to envision the future, right? And think about, I mean, the, the, the quick way to summarize that is to really think about where do you see yourself in all these years? Um, and I think that the challenge we'll have given some of the, you know, constraints we've had here, you know, that I, I think affect staff, right? But mainly budgetary, and so it's hard I think it can be hard to, for staff to envision a future. So I'm trying to encourage staff, look, don't think about anything it, like of constraints. Yeah. Because we, you need to think of, really, what is it? Where do you see yourself at all without anything that might be a roadblock? Mm -hmm. And so I think the exercise that exercises that she does is to really get people to think like that. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of activities and sticky notes on big sticky note kind of mm -hmm. stuff. But that's kind of as much as I know right now. She did give me sort of a loose agenda for the day. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? I could talk all night about the strategic plan, but I don't feel like <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. the moment. I mean, I, you know, there's there's not too much else I don't, I don't think to say about it now, but. Yeah. You know, until we kind of get get through it, I'm sure we get a lot to talk about. Yeah, you know, I know. Especially because it's not in the habit of life of the library to do this. Um, yeah, this will be new for everybody, mm -hmm. um, as far as I can tell. Um, uh, you know, I just need to close email. Okay, it's not, it's not really on the anyway, um, I, I think just just getting the staff together, this team to really just talk and brainstorm about 
things that we, we don't always get a chance to because we're so ingrained in the day. Yeah. You know? That's cool. So it sounds a little bit like a retreat. It is a retreat. It's kind of a retreat, yeah. and, and, and the result of that will be, you know, some some form of a plan that, that we can follow. Mm-hmm. And what what I anticipate after that day is bringing, giving staff a week or two to kind of comment on some of the things we talked about as a leadership team, and then coming to the board with that as well. Um, and and, and the, the structure of it really is. You know, we don't walk out of that day with a plan. We walk out with kind of maybe the, the main themes of it. And then it's ultimately my job to say, these are the themes which form the plan and here's what we're gonna do. Um, so I, I see myself for sure coming back here. Um, well, Jamie and I are coming back here because Jamie will be there too. So I think that'll be good and then, um, to have that involved. Very cool, thank you for making this happen because <laughs> I have a feeling that you were the driving force behind this for the library. Uh, old business now. Budget. Budget. Um, so just, it, it's sort of another quick, um, maybe not a, not a great update for you, but I, I need to share it anyway. So, um, I presented the budget as I do every year to the city manager um, and, and and this isn't just the library I should say but you know the, the outlook again yeah. is pretty bleak for the city as far as as funding um, so we were warned about that before we presented but I presented anyway um, and share everything that I've been saying all along and that we've all been saying all along so uh, I won't know, you know, at this point, it's sort of in, in their hands. It'll go to council. Um, I think usually, that, when is that? It's usually like in September. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. So I, I won't really know a whole lot there. I just, I, I felt like I needed to, to let the board know that, you know, it, we might be in the same position we were last year, which is really no additional funding. Um, and, in some ways less if you think about increased costs with with no additional funding and you know I'm, I'm trying to find different ways to sell this but at the same time I think you know anyone else I talked to in the city and other most other departments I should say you know they're they're getting the same um, uh, conversation from the city manager of finance as far as where the city's at and how much additional they can fund for anybody. I don't know what else to tell you. Was this a meeting with just was this a meeting with just you and Carol, or was this your meeting with Jack? What was this one? This one. So the it was it, well, it was with Harold. The way it's structured, and, and so they they kind of organize these. It's a whole day of budget presentations to Harold and his team. So it's the Harold, the assistant city managers, the finance our finance um, officer and you present that to them and then they go through every department so I was there with my boss Jeff Friesner and then the assistant city manager Joni Marsh who oversees external services which we are in with other departments such as facilities and parks and open space so it's it's a massive day in fact it, it goes over a few days when you get through all the departments so that so it's not one-on-one with myself and then this city manager and and our finance officer and really anyone else but it's mostly those two or anyone from the finance team that's there that will ask some questions about that anything that you have if they have any um there really weren't too many because the 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 whole uh, presentation meeting started off with um you know harold explaining where the city was and and what it looked like for any additional funding for anybody. So, you know, <laughs> that was kind of where that was at. Can I ask, like, what's the rationale that he gave for that? Like, why the city doesn't have any money for arts and culture and libraries and stuff? For anybody? I mean, and for us. For I mean, other, it's. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, they, they talk at, at least there at a somewhat high level, but. 
it, 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 it really comes from our finance officer at that point as far as it's projections, right? What they're seeing that's going to come in through the various taxes that we get, sales, use, and property. Um, and they're seeing a decline in that in projections. And so that's what informs. So they're, they're cautious as far as extra funding because th there's a concern that there won't be actual money to fund those extra fundings beyond what's already in the budget. Okay, so they make that, uh, they sort of make that projection and then all of this is then just a recommendation to city council who then makes the final decision. Is that, I just wanna make sure I understand the process. Yeah, well, it'll go. It's so not a recommendation. It's not a recommendation. Yeah. It's, it's our budget delivered, but the city manager and the finance team will take all of these things from all departments, mm -hmm. formulate um, a balanced budget, which is what they will deliver to city council. And that's what city council effectively votes on and Susie can correct me if I'm wrong yeah. but they basically at that point they're not voting on necessarily the details of the budget maybe there's some questions about it but there, I think it's, yeah and there's some questions um there isn't really an opportunity as I've learned for us to kick things back um one of the you know as we were preparing and you know I'm having conversations with Jim and Harold on you know, on the budget and, you know, how can we support underfunded departments? And a lot of it comes back to, we have some initiatives that are supposedly going on the ballot. I think on the referendum five, I can't remember. From the city? No, the oh. state. Oh, the state. Which will have implications. Our initiative 50, I believe, is that the one with the, uh, Yes, under Initiative 50, state revenue will increase by approximately. So there's like this whole um, formula that would reduce the amount that cities would be able to collect and um, in an attempt to lower taxes. There's also um, 108, which is another one that could be if you, I, I mean, don't quote me on these because they're very in depth. I mean, I still have to finish look, reading through the Colorado Blue Book on it. Um, but the other one was 108, I know, would have impacts for local government, for school districts, as far as how much money, money they could they could get. It would bring, you know, we would have a deficit of what we would collect from taxes, um, and it's state and it sounds like it's gaining traction among the populace to to support this because the you know with inflation it's it's been very challenging for people to be able to afford and the house price is going up and then the property tax on the assessed value of the house is um, impacted what people could afford so then of course then they're spending less um, Projects that we've had in the queue for several year for several years, it it sounds like they're a lot more expensive now because of inflation, because of supply chain issues. I mean, we're still dealing with the after effects of COVID, and I did not realize as I'm sitting there and they're explaining all these things to me and my head's about to explode, and um, that there are a lot of other mitigating factors, and really it depends on what happens, what initiatives pass this fall on the November ballot. So just some of those those um, ballot measures that promise to lower taxes could have a really negative impact on what we're trying to do as a, as a municipality, right. as well as what the school district and other mm -hmm. entities that depend on on tax revenue. Susie, Susie, this isn't based on anything that has passed. This is based on kind of projections for what would pass in November? It's, some of it is, some of it is inflation costs. You know, we have projects that are in the queue for, um, that were paid, that, you know, were promised general fund money. I'm, I'm trying to articulate, it's very complicated. I'm not trying to, I'm trying to present this in a way that's not, I wanna make sure I'm saying it right. So, um, so, while there are things from the general fund that we're supposed to pay for 
different projects, especially I'm thinking about transportation or roads, public safety, how other barriers have, you know, other roadblocks came, you know, have come to play, in, including supply chain issues, um, inflation, the incrementing costs. So that has had impact to the budget as well as what the governor has already passed as far as reducing um, tax, assessed tax value. We have a lot of people who are, I think he opened the door, like some bill he passed that allowed people to um, go through this process to, um, you know, to fight what, if they have a disagreement about what the assessed value is. Yeah. So there are a lot of properties that are in the queue to be reviewed where we're not collecting anything from yet. So there's so there's multiple factors it seemed this year, more than what I've heard in years past of why yeah. um, why I think they're wanting to err on the side of caution. Right. Um, you know, and, and something I'd asked, and you know, and I've seen this happen before, is looking as things project like maybe in a positive way can we um move those you know like do a um gosh what's the word um to um you know move funds from the general balance so if we find that we're we have more than what we had anticipated can we allocate these dollars to different departments as the time comes and so and i've seen this happen you know in mid-year budget decisions that have come to our desk so there's you know i i want to be hopeful that we could if things work in our favor that we could tap into that if needed um but it just sounded like there were a lot of different factors that they're weighing in and they really want to err on the side of caution rather than throwing all this money out there and um, not having you know the anticipated money come down and we've already committed these dollars for other things right and and, and, and we, we faced this last year too with, uh-huh. with the prop the prop uh, whatever on property taxes yeah. because you know the budget has to be settled before the election mm-hmm. and you know yes. so the city didn't know like if yeah. the prop whatever it was 50 or five, whatever it was, but it yeah. was, you know, if it passed, it was going to mean mm-hmm. this much or it was going to mean nothing, you know, mm-hmm. because, uh, you know, so there's, there are, there are unknowns and the timing is unfortunate. So yeah, yes. I mean, if, mm-hmm. if, um, so, so they operate on that, that caution side, which I mean, I can imagine as a fiscal officer, you need to do that, Yeah. you know, and so, you know, was certainly presenting. I can tell you that our assistant city manager, Joni Marsh, is a million percent behind the library. She ranked a lot of our funding requests very high up over many other areas within external services. And the rankings help. Mm-hmm. And, and if it doesn't help in the immediate, then as Susie points out, possibly after mm-hmm. elections and there's a more realistic picture, then maybe they'll look back at, you know, the requests and how things were ranked and maybe what can be distributed. So, I mean, I don't want to say all hope is lost, but at the same time, I just, that there's, there's a realistic picture of, mm-hmm. you know, we're, we're not swimming and running this year. Yeah. Good questions. Anything else? Well, thank you for explaining it, both of you. I tried. Um, no, thanks, Cindy. I, I, there was no way. It was so complicated. Uh, uh, I, I did have a couple of questions. One, um, I'm just w- repeating back what I'm hearing, uh, that no increase uh, for next year. This is the second year in a row of no increase. And I don't know that for sure yet. Like, I don't have an answer. Expectation. Yeah, right? just, it just doesn't look yeah. It doesn't look great. Um, but when we say no additional funding, uh, that includes any sort of like inflation adjustment, COLA adjust. It's it's not no new net funding. It's like 
maybe this much last year, then we're looking yeah. at that amount. So yeah, so there, there's amount. some there's some funding requests that I do, mm -hmm. such as maintenance agreements that generally have a percentage increase. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now I, I will say a, a difference in this year versus last year is I'm getting some questions on some of those percentage increases. Of, is that of, looking at your capital budget? No, just That's my general. Just yeah. Um, so, uh, but it, but in general, those do get covered. I mean, but our our maintenance agreements. You know, when you look at uh, like our our Marmot library membership. Sure. You know that's you know, it, it. I can't remember the exact amount or the but the percentage. I think that this year is a seven or eight percent increase, mm -hmm. which is fairly high. Um, but that amounts to I think maybe around eight or nine thousand dollars, as an example. Other ones are much less. That's the highest. So even if I take all of our database agreements that we have through Gale or EBSCO or whoever. You know, the, the total of those, if you assume everyone goes up by a few percent, all amounts to less than $3,000 increase. So generally those go through. Um, but there have been some questions this year on even some of those that I did not get questions on last year, uh, which is new. So I'm not quite sure what that means yet, but i um, fielding those questions. Second question, I apologize for not knowing this, is where this is more for Susie. Mm -hmm. um, where uh, do the public have an opportunity to learn about, hear about the budget process and potentially ask questions about the process? So, I mean, of course, you can come to City Council mm -hmm. um, during public comment. That would be a great time to ask ask the questions you would not get a response at that time a lot of times what happens is though if we are hearing these questions and then they come up to us during the general general session or the opportunity for council to weigh in we are asking those particular questions um, the other one you know we do have an open forum i was going to announce that during my council liaison updates on the 30th so you are you do have a uh, longer time to, to discuss, but you won't be able to you won't have any kind of um, presenting of the budget. Right, but it, it's not the kind of environment where you can be like, so you know you can ask a question, not about the specific budget for this specific mm -hmm. term, but like mm -hmm. just the overall. How does this work? I think it's a really good question. That I, is I don't question. know what, what the awareness is uh -huh. on the public side of, you know, when it, like I call it budget season for me, because, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, 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 and theoretically that's the time, right? And it, it, it can be done through boards and commissions for one thing, but. Yeah, but for residents just to even come and have an understanding of right. what the budget. Right. Is that what goes into it? What goes into I'll give you an example. One of my questions is mm -hmm. when the city is looking at, I mean, obviously, you know, it, it's going to know what uh, costs or expenses are being needed or requested mm -hmm. for the coming year. But looking at revenue, aside from um, like property tax, where are the other sources of revenue? Things like new rateables coming into the city, or you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. is it just like, oh yeah, you think that we built a Costco and now there's all this money coming in? That's that's actually not the case, mm -hmm. or it gets canceled out because we lost this big thing that closed or mm -hmm. um, is no longer in the city. Stuff like so that. to have a back and forth dialogue, I don't know if there's really an opportunity. Um, we will have, and I pulled up our 2024 budget documents, if you want, I can send mm. you that link that oh, has, I know. yeah, okay. So, your presentations of the council, August 29th, um, September 5th, and September 12th, September 19th, so it, essentially every week in September, 
Hmm. With the first public hearing happening on September 26th. So, and then the second public hearing is October 3rd. So that would be the time for uh, comments from the public. Okay. The 26th and the 3rd. But the meet, I, every single meeting starting from the 29th. Have some, kind of budget some kind of budget component. Well, like the, the coffee with council mm -hmm. mistakes. Like those would be good. You can ask those kinds oh, of questions. Oh yeah. There. Yep. Okay. And I'm mine's is the next one with council member Chris. Okay, cool. So I'll have to brush up on the budget. <laughs> <laughs> be ready for you. I think where this is all going mm -hmm. for me, and um, you know, I'm curious. The 27th is this coffee with council. Okay, of this month. Mm -hmm. That's good. That is great. Um, sorry. What I'm curious to hear from other board members here is. Mm -hmm. uh, Are there other sources, potential sources of revenue that, that can be considered in support of the library? If there is, you know, perhaps a temporary reduction or freeze on funding from the city. Um, the only source I'm aware of is the Friends mm -hmm. as a fundraising body. But in terms of any sort of, yeah, fundraising or revenue generating activity, mm -hmm. none of that can originate with the library, correct? That's correct. Well, the museum capital campaign was led by the Friends of the Museum. Yeah. So that it wasn't that mm -hmm. the library or the museum right. Right. initiated it. Right. No. They, they might have posted or had some events at the museum that. Right. And my assumption that like a donation to the Friends group is the most, uh, I don't know, the, the clearest way yeah. to. Yeah earmark dollars for the library and not have it go into a general fund. A hundred percent. It's its yeah. own it's its own thing. It's its mm -hmm. own thing. Yeah. All right. And you had asked like not pie in the sky, but what had how far off, how much of an increase had you been hoping for? Oh, well, I mean, the, the full dollar amount increase for everything? Like the ballpark gap between if nothing, if there's zero increase and what would be a, a respectable increase in line with right. inflation? I, I think it was, um, it was at least the, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to, I feel like I should know that answer. Um, it was probably around seven or eight hundred thousand total. Okay. okay. A lot of it, of course, staffing, but then increases to operating costs, particularly in programming, mm -hmm. so that we're not relying on, we're not relying on, yeah, so that's part of our core budget, just like collections. Mm -hmm. And that's a big amount. It is I asked a loan of a hundred thousand just for digital collections. Right. Okay. Uh -huh. um, just because we don't we don't spend anywhere near neighboring libraries mm -hmm. or libraries of comparable size, which is all pointed out by budget requests. Mm -hmm. And the how they and I'm almost wondering if because how the city looks at it is level one, level two. So the level one is that I can't control costs. Yes. A, a percent increase to a maintenance agreement. Mm -hmm. The level two is everything else you want to add on. Mm -hmm. So that's most of what your requests are. 
Okay. And, and generally, staffing is going to come in there. Mm-hmm. All these things come in there. Mm-hmm. You know, which which makes it even more challenging, right? Yeah. Because I can't really justify. I mean, in my mind, everything's level one. Right? Yeah. Because <laughs> right. you know, but that's my opinion. It's, uh, yeah. Um, it's just not the way it's structured. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. If if all if let's just say everything I got was funded. We would be if if you think back to the feasibility study, mm-hmm. and and it's a you know at this point that might need to be adjusted a little bit for the uh, the dollars it was talking to, but the concept is the same. We would be somewhere in between where we are now and that preferred level of service that it was recommending. Right. We wouldn't hit that, no. and that was never the goal in my budget request. I'm just right. trying to get towards it mm-hmm. because I don't think it's realistic. I mean, I'm, I'm not. Try. I mean, I'd love yes. to. I'd love to go from zero to we're now a preferred level of service library. Yeah. But I, I'm, I'm sure. I'm trying to be okay. Look, let's let's get like step. Let's do a step here in this direction. Uh-huh. You know, that's that's what I'm trying to accomplish. But that that sounds that was huge. Very that. significant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That three quarters of a million dollars mm-hmm. is a step. That's how Stuff. much. That's how, that's how far, far we, we have are to from go. how we should be funded. Yeah. Right. Again, for a city of this size. So I would be curious if there is a number that um, is is lower than that, and it is really just to tread water, because a, a second consecutive year of no increase, mm-hmm. no adjustment, is a step backward. Yep. Mm-hmm. You will do less than you did last year, yeah. which is less than you did the year prior. Correct. So what would it take to not even advance toward our uh, our goals, but to just be able to do the same? Like, is that something that we can, that is knowable? Like, we want to maintain the same level of service and functionality, but it's going to cost us you know, four hundred thousand dollars more because of all of the increased costs. Yeah, I mean, I think the way I would look at that is just figure like a percentage total, mm-hmm. you know, and then how that's broken down is one thing. But I think, you know, at this point, I think I, I don't know what that is. Let's just say like the, five percent, the, you know, whatever. Yeah. I feel like the rating system does that a little bit too for you. I mean, maybe you can take a step further and do the math for them. I feel like that your prioritization kind of, you know, the highest priority, the mid priority versus, Mm -hmm. and I guess that is part of what's nice about the prioritization system, at least I think so, Jamie, that then, yes, in these lean years where the city has to make hard choices, and they look at kind of middle ground, and they think the priority system can blend that a little bit, I would hope. I would hope. True, and that priority has sort of a, a mix of staffing and collections, basically, mm-hmm. and, and a little bit of the program. Can I come back, and again, this may totally be a, my own ignorance, but like, I'm just curious about this dynamic where like you're basically trying to convince the city managers to fulfill our requests instead of I thought that the city council was who we needed to convey this urgency to and we've tried so many times. So have we been like barking up the wrong tree? Is it really these two people who kind of control the purse strings and we need to we should have been like wooing them all these years? Like <laughs> I don't know how I've missed this detail before, but it seems very confusing to me that two people who are unelected would be making these choices. Can someone clarify? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, ultimately, we are the, the final say so. But we highly, you know, we heed the warnings of our finance director and our city manager because they're also looking at the whole scope. And, you know, I think we have, I know, you know, now having Joan, uh, the mayor involved in the conversations and having her um, also be able to talk to 
to our city manager and kind of be in his ear about the needs and how you know having a robust library and having those connections with youth and community that does alleviate other problems with public safety with kids out and about making mischief you know, and and kind of setting those those goals and um you know, aspirations for kids to to lean to lean towards. So I know that, you know, I feel like they're listening. Uh, it's just it's really hard. I mean, looking at if the money's not there, we have to provide a functioning city. We cannot. You know, I think that that's where the that's where the balance lies. But you get the final say. We do have the final say. Okay, but earlier um, you said you can't really push back on their recommendations. I didn't so say that we can push. We, I, we can't push back. Did I say that? Well, you said we. You don't really have a lot of way to change anything about the budget once it comes through to you. That was my understanding. So I maybe I misunderstood. You. I think by the time in October, you know, once it comes to us for final voting, it's already. But right now the discussions are happening. Okay, sorry if I misunderstood. Okay, sorry if I. I just want, I mean, I just want to make sure that we, there is still, because I, again, I just uh -huh. believe that we have to go backwards, like to Jamie's point, you know. Yeah. So have you, and I found the, the document, um, is that, that's level two? Is that, yes, okay. yeah, yep, um, and then, and then that's my ranking. Your ranking. Yeah, and, and then Joey took that plus all the other external services and did a, a full blown ranking. Okay, of all of all of the department that includes facilities, parks, yes. office space, recreation, and, and museum. Uh huh. And, and you others. know, so I think like for me, one of something. Okay, so this fall on, on our ballot, we'll be having um, a ballot measure on the open space, moving it from from where it would expire. The sales tax for that would expire in 2034 was what we had voted back in 2014. <clears throat> then this ballot measure is going to ask the voters to approve the, the tax change in perpetuity. That will then free up monies because then the open space has their own fund in looking forward, you know, in, in you know, right. so, <laughs> my, my mind is, you know, just the, um, you know, moving, moving forward. Mm -hmm. So um, then that opens up space and dollars in our budget for other, other things. And so that's where, um, so. That's a really helpful perspective, I right? think. And so in looking at how we can use other other means so not necessarily if we cannot find ways to um, bring up library revenue through outside sources how could we bring up outside sources to offset other departments right. for that general budget so i think i sit on the steering yeah. committee for the core and leads team so we are currently working on so we recently received a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar grant for training um, to do mass casualty threat assessments. So we're doing, you know, so we have staff that's trained on doing the typical threat assessments for an individual who's in mental health crisis, suicidal, but we don't really have a mechanism or the staff capacity and understanding to do a mass casualty assessment. So being able to tap into grants and funding so we can acquire those you know those necessary training and and money for um, trained personnel that's not pulling from our city budget to pay for these things but finding outside money so rather than having to because the need is there um, you know just given the, the state of our, our country today the need is there but do we pull them from our general fund to be able to pay for these things or what are other ways that we can bring in revenue to cover 
these um, essential services and training and, and personnel. So I, you know, so I'm kind of thinking in the lines of what you were saying, Jamie, as far as how can we look for other sources of revenue. And so for me, I'm looking at the whole picture, how can we acquire and pay for, acquire different sources of revenue for other things to free up that money. Does that make sense? Okay, okay. it totally does. Um, so that's kind of in the lines of where I'm, I'm thinking. Um, and yeah, so and it, it is, it's a chiseling of it a little at a time. But, um, but it's helpful to know that these items that are in the level two, that they are ranking higher up mm -hmm. among other departments. Yeah. Um, requests. Is whatever you're looking at confidential or is it? No, it was the, uh, um, I, who gave this to me? You gave it to me. It I don't was, know if I did the, I don't know if I gave you the spreadsheet. It was back it's in not, May, just, and you know what? It was a spreadsheet that he shared with us, I think in the May meeting. Yeah, I, I shared I it, but I never put it in the packet. Oh. So I'm, okay. I'm happy to send we it all, out. We all it. saw it, yeah. It was from the presentation. Okay, so it's not something we know. No, no, no. no. It's it was, I had to go back in my old email. Yeah, I was sharing I was how for. I ranked our own requests, right. and that's what, that's what Susan's referring to. Okay, right. And then this is just a, speaking of pots of money, but what did Longmont do with the $900,000 in the Bronco refund? So uh, it went to children's youth and families. Okay, but not the library. No, no. Um, we went to Children's Youth and Families um, to, and then they, the Youth Council had used that money and divided it up among um, nonprofits that um, applied. So some nonprofits received, you know, $1,000, some received $5,000 for um, activities that they were doing that directly impacted youth. And use engagement. Okay. Speaking of grants, are there grants that are applicable to the library um, that are eligible for the, the library to apply for? Is that something that that I don't know? I don't know who, if, if somebody at the city level does that on your behalf, or if it's somebody else. No, it would be yeah. us. Mm -hmm. It would be us here, and you know we, we've. I mean, I haven't been here too long, but we, we've applied for and received some grants, not on the level to accomplish things like we're talking about at a budgetary level, yeah. you know, but, um, and, but there are grants like that, right? And, and they particularly are through LSTA, like the federal grants where you can mm -hmm. really get in the hundreds of thousands to support something. Um, and it's, it's not necessarily out of the picture to do some mm -hmm. things like that. I, I do want to be careful about, uh, you know, grants like that should support the level of funding that you have, not doing them because you need it to survive. Right. Yeah, right. And so, one and, they, time. and those federal grants in particular, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. if any of you have ever been a part of something like that, I have not here, but in my last job, some of these LST grants, they're, they're extremely involved. Mm -hmm. And you really need some grant writing expertise. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it's not to say that it, it can't be done, but I'd rather do that for some big initiative, you know, like, not like in my, in my last job before here, we did it through the state of California and we got a huge grant and it gave us, um, these literacy, uh, mobile vehicles and, you know, it was a big initiative like that, but it did not include staffing. Mm -hmm. Right. So we, we still had to have staff that, that could drive the actual vehicles. So it's, you know, you have to really think about when you do these things, but that's a long-winded answer to your question, but they're out there. And, you know, the other conversation, the other piece, now that you have mentioned that, Doug, I, I have been in conversations with Harold, and it sounds like he's pretty receptive to this. Um, at one of our, the open house for the fire station, we were talking about the old fire station and looking at how we can tap into 
existing city space yeah. for even a pop-up library or something yeah. that um, that you know we can reach people in different parts of the, the community yeah. and you know so it, it Again, it's just these constantly putting the bug in the ear and just and, and helping people really envision that. And then, you know, once they hear it several times, it's like, okay, yeah. I can see how we can incorporate that in. And I think, you know, uh, opportunities like that, existing facilities, or uh -huh. whether it's a, a library of some sort, or uh -huh. if, we, if we can find funds to even get like storage type lockers for old pickup or anything that expands a service where people yeah. see there's a service mm -hmm. on their side of town yes could really be huge Great. in driving advocacy yes and they come at a much lower cost uh -huh. than a 30 some million dollar library yes. in the wrong part of town in the wrong part of town. so yeah. uh, I, i'm definitely behind things like that and mm -hmm. i think that there I, i've heard about that that's the one on like over and down right? yes yep. yeah yeah I think those are fantastic ideas because yeah. it's, it's there. It's there. It's already yeah. there. And so you don't really need still, much more. No. No. To it. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, we're still trying to find ways to think outside the box, yep. and you know, I'm still kind of helping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See what I can do. Yeah. Okay. But Paul, if you haven't noticed, a lot of our conversation is about how to get the library money. Mm. I I wonder how many if you've seen other entities within the city, other departments, maybe like if a certain number of years mm -hmm. that entity has to function without an increase in budget. Like at some point, will council or somebody intervene and say? All right, it's been five years, and uh, you know we, we there's just no nothing extra for this group or this mm -hmm. institution. You know we need to talk strategy or approach or something. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not insinuating, but I want to be reassured that uh, the library is not just at the bottom of the pile. Mm -hmm. Since I've been on council, I have seen how council has talked about and prioritized the library. Mm -hmm. It seems to be going up okay. in priority since the time that I first got on council to to where we're at today. So I, I, I get the sense that council is listening and understanding the need and understanding how if we have robust services this is one of the things that i've really really tried to drive home being an educator is when we have those a robust programming services activities for things for youth to do they are not causing trouble they're not making mischief they're they're not making poor decisions when they are able to participate in programs, whether it's, you know, the library, museum, you know, children's youth and families, right. youth center. Um, so how the library can play a role in reducing the number of public safety incidents among our youth. So there is mm -hmm. that, that correlation. And I'm, I'm hearing that echo among my council colleagues as well, where I used to not hear that before. Well, the, the, the last thing I would add to as far as city priorities, there was a lot of talk you know, with, with attainable and affordable housing, yeah. which I don't disagree with, yeah. but, but, or I don't know, and is what and, I should yeah. say, uh -huh. you know, people that would need attainable or affordable housing are the very people that need a library. In the library. Yeah. It's it's proven. So. Uh-huh. Library it's might be good to add help the argument. Find. Yeah. That is how people can find their housing. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. They might yeah, be exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's how people yeah. find their housing. Yeah.
Just for the thoughts, questions on this very big issue. That I'm sure we'll come back to the agenda again. Yeah. Other requests for information or things that you would like to see uh, pertaining to this discussion at a future meeting? I just, you know, one part of the feasibility study, which Nicole, at some point we should fill you in on it if you're not familiar, but basically um, we were, you know, we were compared to like comparable cities in terms of size and growth patterns, et cetera. I'm curious if those other cities are experiencing similar financial constraints and how they're responding, or are there some models out there we can point to that are saying like, hey, these folks are also struggling with, you know, maybe pennies but they are still investing in their libraries yeah I, I I can do some work in there mm -hmm. I, I, um, I mean I don't want you I, to have another time it only no, 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 but I have time. I mean I have mm -hmm. you know and it's 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 kind of on my I played again because I want to you know look at those numbers again and, and it's all there. It's all in the state library. I, I can pull numbers from neighboring libraries and see what, what they're spending and what they're doing in comparison. Yeah. And then, Nicole, good. just so you know, when, when you're back, I, I generally do like a, a, like an intro meeting with new board members and kind of go over the board and things about the library. So I'll do that when you're back. It generally would happen before this meeting. So uh, welcome to the fire hose. <laughs> no, that's great. That's perfect. I'm just um, absorbing it all. Yeah. So it's fine. <laughs> I'll get a sense of it now. I'll, I'll chat with you. Yeah. I wonder if there'll be some content at um, Talcon in September. Uh, maybe. Around like state of the state libraries. Is that possibly a common feature? I um. I, I don't know. I haven't really looked closely at the agenda. Okay. okay. We are now moving on to the reports and information items. John, we just did give you it's, some different hats or. It's the John show. Like a mustache or John something. Show. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, put something else on. Yeah. <laughs> Still the same. Costume change. Yeah. yeah. Um, just just a few items for my director update. A um, little bit lighter topics, maybe, <laughs> which will be nice. So, uh, just to let you know, upcoming things. Um, I, I realize it's only July, but never too early to state. So, um, in September, particularly, that's a big month in library land because there's a you know, National Library Card Sign Up Week, and then there's the Ban Books Week, and a lot of stuff happens in September on a national level. Um, we'll be doing a, a pretty sizable program at the end of September on Van Books Week. Uh, we'll do, uh, this will be at the museum. We're partnering with the museum as we have done uh, with some other programs. Uh, we will be screening a documentary short that was nominated for the Academy Awards called the ABCs of Book Banning. Uh, if you haven't seen it, you should try to see it. If not, come to the program or either way. What is the program again? So, uh, that's a question I should have anticipated. Okay. Um, it's, it's, so, I'll look it up. Okay. I don't want to, I can't talk to you stuff. Um, I hear you. <laughs> still working on that skill. Uh -huh. Anyway, it's at, it's at the, towards the very end of September because that's when Van Books would get, so I can tell you that. Um, we'll be screening it and then uh, we'll have a, a panel with a 30 minute discussion on this, including some local youth um, to talk about book banning and in part because the film basically 100% uh, of it is just interviewing um, these kids in Florida who are f facing all these censorship things and it's, it's a very good film. And, so it'll be a panel um, after that, and then a presentation by we bring in every year that does readings from the top like five or ten banned books of last year, mm -hmm. um, and, and sort of like an interpretive thing. It's it's fun, but it's very telling. So uh, more on that, but I just wanted to, to plug that now. Um, 
while I was thinking about it. Today um, is the 29th. 29th yeah. sounds right. The 29th yeah. of September. Yeah. Um, and then the next week, not related to Van Books Week, but we've been working for over a year to bring in an author, Cy Montgomery, um, who you may or may not know, who writes both adult and teenage fiction, I believe. And so we finally arranged to bring Cy out here with the support of the friends, as, as you can probably assume, but that's how we're getting that done. Um, that'll be the, just the next week. Um, the first week of October again at the museum, but Sai has agreed to do two programs. One will be here at the library um, in the late afternoon with uh, the children and teen department, and then uh, more of a formal author, you know, um, reading and speaking at the museum, which is a great venue for these kinds of things. So just to let you know about those. Um, I also wanted to share with you all, I have had a couple of meetings with uh, the executive director of La Mont Public Media, actually, um, who reached out to me uh, to talk about really uh, kind of growing our partnership that we already do with LPM. Right now, we, we certainly do our podcasting there. We have a membership as a library. Uh, that's how we deliver our um, podcasts. Uh, what is it every, it's not every month. Is it every month, Tracy? No. At least I think it maybe it is bi-weekly. Right? Sometimes I don't, it seems like there's been more than one sometimes. But yeah. Anyway, we do that, but, but we were talking about what what else could we do together, and so I brought in our computer lab team who does trainings, and this is moving forward I think in a great way. So we'll be partnering with them um, for some upcoming technology classes that we do, but this will be in partnership with them. I think the first one will be on um, cameras and camera use. So. I think some volunteers from LPM will help teach that here. Um, I think people will get a tour of Walmart Public Media and learn about the equipment they can borrow. So I think this is great and I see a good future in this. Um, that probably, well, anyway, I, I, I just think it's good. Um, and, and I think a lot more could be done. And it's right here and it's yeah. actually in the library. So um, there. Anyway, so there's that. Uh, that will be kind of the first thing we do. I think we we talked a lot, and, and something the library's always wanted to do is have some sort of space uh, to have like esports, like gaming, mm -hmm. that we really can't do here, but LPM can support that um, on some level. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more. But I think the library's always been interested in kind of diving into that where people can come to a free place to engage in that gaming that otherwise they might have to go somewhere else and either pay for or, or whatever. So a lot to look forward there. So some good news there. Um, and then the last thing um, I thought would be fun to share with the board, uh, <clears throat> a patron story. I always like to share these. Um, uh, of one of our patrons who comes in occasionally, but had been uh, looking for jobs and um, got called for an interview and it was very fast and part of the interview had to prepare a presentation and then and everything was done through Google Meet and this person didn't know anything about it so it was, it was coming in and getting help from our own staff on this um, to a whole new level. I mean staff were fully engaged with her, I don't know the result of the job interview, but she certainly got an interview and, and was well prepared for it and took the time to come in and then write to me on uh, just the level of support that she got from staff on that. She wanted to buy them like a pizza party oh. <laughs> or something. I, I said, you know, what would be meaningful? Not that that wouldn't be. I said, I will buy the pizza for the staff if you write to me like a letter sharing your experience, which I do have. Um, and I should have thought to, to bring that up here, but I'll, uh, I didn't get it too long ago. So, but anyway, it's, it's basically sharing what I said and just uh, how um, needed and beneficial that was for her. And I mean, staff spent really between about three or four people out, countless hours with her and getting her up to speed and downloading software and training her how to use it. And that's just kind of the stuff we do. And it was helping someone get a job. So I thought that was a good story. And it was with Teams, is that? Uh, she, Microsoft she, Teams? No, she yeah. had to use Google Meet, oh, Google and Meet. There, there was some requirement, and 
there were some obstacles there, you know, mm -hmm. not just yeah. for her, but just in general, like, mm -hmm. and then, and had to do a slide deck through it, and so wow. we were helping, I mean, wow. so we, I think they were helping her, you know, kind of convert some things she had into Google Me, and mm -hmm. it was, it was just quite something, and I mean, I, I wish everyone could have, um, can we see what you're seeing? I'm not showing anything. What do you mean? Oh, you know what? That might have been the that's, slide. That's what break. I was asking about when uh, yeah, the rankings. The oh, rankings. I'm, okay, I'm just looking at you now. Oh. I just saw a chat now. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Oh my God. Am I showing something? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just assumed it's me. I just assumed it was you. Okay. Um, no, uh, I don't know what I was saying. Oh, just God, when she was in here, just I mean, she was practically in tears, you know, just just. It's kind of a rough thing to do to somebody in a job interview. I, I mean, mean, it was. If that were a criterion yeah, yeah. for working at a place. Yeah. You know, half of my colleagues would lose their jobs. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> right? These a lot of credit has to go through her. Like she yeah. was going to persevere and get this done, yeah, but she came done. here for help. What pressure? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of pressure. That's awesome. Um, I just wanted to share, I think, those things. Um, so that's what I got. That's me for library director. Mm -hmm. Do you know right off the top of your head what year the library opened? Which library? This one. In this building? 1992 or 3. Before that, it was somewhere else, obviously. It was it was kind of here, but not this building. Right. It was mm -hmm. a little bit, and then I don't actually remember what happened. And then before that was the Carnegie, which is mm -hmm. LPM, and then before that it was somewhere else. Okay. I think that this is cool. I don't yes. remember an adult oh, yeah, summer reading thing in yeah. previous years. I think this is really cool. It's this at least the second year it's been done, maybe more. I don't remember it. That's awesome. Yeah, we, you know, we. I think we're we did a little bit more effort this year on, on marketing that to get more adults engaged in summer reading, and it's a fun program. And already already have some ideas for next year. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. It may be a similar program, but like, in, in basically in price enticements, right? Uh, with some people we talked to, but maybe partnering with some community places to get yeah, right. more engagement. Mm -hmm. But good, I'm glad. Are you doing it? Did you win? You don't know yet. I don't know yet. It's too soon. I haven't put it in yet. No, I Wait, don't tell me. Wait, do I still have time? There's time. You can... I thought I could stand the month. July Correct. 31st. Oh, oh, yeah. July 31st. I have to wait in the month. Yeah. <laughs> The, the adult, I, I will say, it, it, it's almost much easier to, to join and, and, and win. And the kids have much more to do. Yeah. I, I was so excited about the concept of last year. And then I just, it didn't happen at all. And I found myself, like, even thinking about it, I had this, like, mysterious resistance. And then I realized that I'm still dealing with... Uh, school-based summer reading trauma. <laughs> or oh, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> so oh, did you feel like you feel like with what she said to do with her to look at you, Jamie? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Like to hear that as a teacher. Yes. Well, I don't think this trauma. happens anymore, <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> but in my day, you were required to read yeah. a certain number of books, and you were not given a choice. So it was read these books. And I don't know, I didn't want to, to be told what to read. So I don't know, there's something, I know that it's very flexible and not serious, but I was like, they had these different, you know, read from this subject area. Yeah, like, I don't like that subject. I can't imagine you having an opinion on the matter. Yeah. <laughs> or voicing it. <laughs> <laughs> or solicit Yeah, or solicit it. Okay, I have nothing to report for the friends other than they are having their annual retreat on the 22nd. Um, I have yet to confirm that I am invited to be there. Um, so I do not even know at this point what like their 
focus is, but I know that they've discussed various things as a focus. I mean, I assume. You ass I assume. I assume. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to assume. So I have to. I have to uh, check in with Sharon and just like you meant to include me on that email, right? Okay. Did you need me to do anything? Or just show up. For what it's worth. Yeah. Uh, in her email about the retreat, then she followed up to Tracy and I said, I hope you can join us for lunch. And I just said, well, Tracy and I will be there for the whole retreat as we mm -hmm. were last year. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. So mm -hmm. there you go. Mm -hmm. I think there's just, you know, there was a, a change of the guard in the last oh, year. Oh, I know. So I think, you know, she, the, the previous board chair handled that differently than chair. So she may not know. But right. that's why I say it's, I, I agree generally with assuming is a bad idea, but in mm -hmm. this case, yeah. I think it's, it is fair. It's the second part. And they did not meet in June, so there really isn't any update anyway. Right. Yeah. Um, and I have not heard how they did it in their pop up, with their pop up earlier this month. Or was it the end of June? Yeah, that's a good question. We don't have no. Oh, I don't know the exact number. It was around 300 total revenue from that sale. Oh, okay. Is that the one for board games? Mm -hmm. Correct. That was the board game specific one, right? Yeah. That makes sense that that one would be lower. But I do want to revisit with them at some point in the next month or so. Uh, what we were discussing here about how we want to interact over the course of the next year, yes. the role of the liaison, um, do we want to plan a joint meeting to, you know, just discuss our mutual interests and learn yeah. from one another? Um, I would like to have some solidity. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Some clarity. Well, we have solidarity with that, but yeah. you know, some some clarity around um, how we can each work most efficiently with one another. Because we're, I find that we're very complementary groups. Um, anybody have any library profession days? There's city council oh, there's city council oh, days. Oh, I, I just checked. No, <laughs> no worries. Uh, well, one of the items that I was going to mention was the uh, open forum, uh, the 30th at 7 p.m. So our whole meeting is dedicated to hearing public comment. Uh, I believe it's five minutes. I think yeah, it's the time. Yeah, it's not the yeah. three. Standard it's not the three, standard yeah. three, so it's five minutes. And and then it gives us opportunity to be able to respond as well. So, um, yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> um, so yeah. So if you had anything you wanted to, to bring forward and um, and ask of council as well, so we'd have to to respond back. So if you're wanting to hear from certain individuals on council, the thirtieth is the time. And that's what makes this different than your average. Public comment. Public comment, right? Yes. Because you don't respond no. in time with those, but this, yes. you can or you, you can. do. Yep, yeah. we do. And um, so that's that'll be on the 30th. Um, the other issue that's going to be, that was brought forward to us, so um, Council Member Martin has been joining us virtually. Uh, her daughter is um, in New York, and she is struggling with some health and mental health um, you know, she did share those those two pieces um, publicly, and so um, Councilmember Martin is over there right now, and she's been there since May. So I don't know if we have any Ward Two uh, members. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, for me, I'd really like to hear how Ward Two people, especially, feel feel about this um, during her last. Her statement at our last city council meeting, she had said that her intention was to fulfill her office um, at least through the end of this year, and then maybe come back during key voting times during the budget to to vote in person. 
but then afterwards, if her situation is not improved, that she would step down. According to our charter, then, it, because it's more than 90 days, we should be looking to appoint an individual. Um, I was very frustrated with how the process happened the last time in that we had that vacant seat for a long time. We were supposed to have a special election, right. but there was a change in Boulder County in, in their staffing capacity, and we had a new person who was leading the um, elections, and they didn't have the capacity to do any, do a special election at that time. So it was kicked back to us, and so we ended up having to wait. We really should have appointed someone at that time, but we didn't. And it was very, um, it was very challenging because we, we were a six-member council. And, you know, and then, of course, if we end up dividing, splitting the vote, the, 30, the three to three, it dies. The, the motion dies. So um, that, that had brought some challenges. We don't want to see that repeat. So tomorrow we are going to be having the discussion at, at depth during at depth during our pre-session mm -hmm. prior to our housing authority meeting, and it sounds like the mayor is asking us to make a decision. I, you know, I'm I'm, I'm getting emails from War Two residents. Some are saying to, you know, she needs to step down. You know, it's going from that all the way to please let her, you know, be flexible, let her stay the course, have her be the person who makes the decision on this. And then we're kind of caught in the middle because we are the deciding body. So I don't know if anyone has any questions, concerns, or thoughts that they want me to consider tomorrow. I mean, I'm, ass I'm assuming there's nothing in our precedence that uh, relates to virtual voting or virtual presence, right? This is kind of the first time this has come up. The virtual piece, yes. Because so prior just, to COVID, she would have had to step down. Yeah, yeah. So I guess, yeah, we're sort of, I guess my only thought about it is just whatever happens is probably going to be a precedent. Mm -hmm. So we should maybe think about it, mm -hmm. certainly sensitive to her personal needs. Mm -hmm. um, but also like as a policy going forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, you said the end of her term would have been when? November of 2025. That's right, okay. Yeah, so she's basically saying like she'll call it in January just for her own, like just to know one way or the other sort of. Yes. That was her approach to it, okay. That's what it sounded like in the in the statement she read. Yeah. I mean, that was what, yeah, it was reported in the paper. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I guess, I don't know, for whatever it's worth, my own personal opinion mm -hmm. is, I would say, I think flexibility is a good thing in general, and it certainly allows more women to participate in municipal mm -hmm. government mm -hmm. um, in general as caretakers often. So I have a lot of empathy for her situation. Yeah, and I do too. I think, but I also think like, you know, if she's really not able to attend mm -hmm. all of the functions virtually, then that's not really workable. Yeah. You know, so I guess it's, you know, from your perspective as a working member of mm -hmm. city council, you know much better than from the outside looking in. Yeah. You know, how, how many things is she actually able to, to get to that yes. she needs to be at versus really she's not able to you know, be in touch with not only her constituents, but also with just all of the information you're constantly being given. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, obviously there's different ways to get information, but I don't think that you can replace like full meetings with just like a recording or a, an email yeah. minutes or yeah. more than here and there, I guess would be yeah. my concern. So, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you, I appreciate that. I am going to echo what Pat said, but also add that you all are part-time city council. Mm -hmm. You're, you have jobs. You have day jobs. Nobody is supposed to be putting in 40 to 60 hours on this. Yeah. Yeah. 
So to somehow act like because she has a family emergency, she didn't manage city council is unrealistic of the expectations of a, a, a part-time city council. Yeah. And I think that's really unfair. Yeah. I'm going to pick on Bonnie Finley just because she no longer won city council. But, you know, I, at my job, we often invite city council and she would often send apologies saying that like, she only gets so, if she worked in Denver, and she only gets so many days off and she has to all, you know, she did so much of her city council stuff in the evening, but if I would invite her to a taste event, yes, I mean, like, like, has, like there's an expectation of kind of interacting with your constituents, but like, she couldn't do it unless it was in the evenings because she works for and that yeah, was yeah, yeah, acceptable, so it feels a little like, yeah, yeah. So yeah. icky to, to expect her to, to step down to step step of that. Yeah. No. I don't want to be the that person or that kind of counsel no. that we are forcing a decision. Um, yeah, that doesn't seem right. I think for me, it's really understanding what constituents, you know, what the perception is. So then, of course, any decision we make is in line with what the residents are are asking us to to consider and in your conversations with constituents it may be helpful mm -hmm. to really distinguish the two pieces mm -hmm. of this question yes there's the hybrid aspect yes right um allowing a council member to participate in a hybrid capacity mm -hmm. uh, and then there is the um the demands that a prolonged personal um, yeah. situation or challenge mm -hmm. may pose. And mm -hmm. to me, they are separate, often mm -hmm. coexisting, but mm -hmm. separate issues. Yes. Um, and I, I hear them get bundled a lot. Okay. Um, that, you know, if somebody is somewhere else doing something else, um, I want to say, well, what if, if this is upsetting to you, or, or it feels like you're you're losing out um, in some way? Mm -hmm. What is it that's bothering you? Is it that this person is not physically here, mm -hmm. or is it that you they either in reality or in in fear you think that they are not able to be present, um, you know, with their full attention and. I tell you, she participates. Right. She participates and she answers her emails. So, <laughs> so if you're participating <laughs> fully and you're just not in moments in the space, yeah. That to me mm -hmm. feels like a different mm -hmm. thing to decide, a different decision to okay. make uh -huh. versus someone who, you know, mm -hmm. is not responsive. Um, yeah, is not able to uh, interact with the public or answer yes. questions and, and mm -hmm. or stay informed on the issues. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. And I, I mean, I would just add maybe like you know, if she decides to move her residence, mm -hmm. right? Or like, at what point? How many months do you live someplace before you become a resident? So yeah. Know, and I know, think like, in the state of Colorado, or I think it was. It was 180, 180 ish days, 183 okay. or something. So she hasn't been out of Colorado that duration. Now, if she ends up staying into next year, then that will be a factor of residency. Mm -hmm. And then there is, you know, the legality piece of it. That's a, yeah, that's just a legal mm -hmm. issue then. That is, you know, that would, and then that would go beyond what council would say or even the residents would say. Right, you would just have to. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Okay, but no, this is this is helpful because I, I wanted to make sure that any discussion or any um, input that I gave was in line with what residents, especially Ward Two residents, um, yeah. want or mm -hmm. agree with. Because again, I don't want to assume. So, <laughs> thank you. So, so.
and are there any other questions about that? And again, it's budget, budget, budget. Yeah. So if you want to come and ask questions about the budget, mm -hmm. the open forum could be a, an avenue. You wouldn't necessarily, you might get your, you would get your specific answer, questions answered, but you wouldn't have like that 101 to budget and how funds are allocated. And that's all I have. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Library stuff, professional stuff, gossip. Well, I, I, I can, um, in case anyone hasn't seen this, you know, in, in the realm of budget, the city of Loveland is, is in big trouble, the library. Um, they had in last year's election, um, and this is, I hear something that could potentially happen in Longmont, but they, they passed something that um, removes tax, sales tax from any grocery items. Where does this happen? Loveland. Loveland. Yes. And, yes, and, they uh, did. And of course, like Loveland, you know, this library relies heavily on sales tax. Mm -hmm. So it's impacted that library, and they were facing as much of a 50% cut to their budget and the last I heard from the director there is the council uh, um, proposed a 36% cut 36 mm -hmm. uh, and that and that's still not final it could still go up to 50 but what what this is going to mean at least in part for that library is um, you know certainly some layoffs are going to happen they're cutting all programming except for some essential programs they're cut their collections are getting a deep cut um, they will be the only digital product they will have at all are ebooks in the same front range digital library that we are a member of uh, which is you know also good for us that they're staying in that because that could have impacts on us but um, just to let you know about that and it's something to be aware of because there's there's been some chatter in Longmont of trying to get something similar on the ballot, and so uh, you you can see in Loveland what the impacts are, are happening there. And every department had to cut, by the way. But so bleak bleak news from from library profession news, but um, you know it, it's worth knowing about, I guess. This is um, just a something I've seen reported. I should double check it, but I did see someone reporting that uh, Project 2025 does call for imprisoning librarians uh, and teachers who, um, you know, allow students to access certain books. Apparently, it's page five. I haven't double checked it myself, but the news. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah. When can I retire? <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I have looked at it, yeah. um, and there are some, that and some other uh, potential mm -hmm. very serious impacts to public libraries if, if that were to move forward in, in the way that it was written. There's, yeah, I mean, if, if you aren't aware of it or you haven't looked into it, you, you can easily look it up and see, but it, it's it, another um, topic or another item out there that's worth paying attention to. Mm -hmm. um, I think Cynthia, on her last day, she didn't bring this up in the board meeting, so it was after the board meeting. Now I'll share it officially in case anyone here is not aware. Um, so unless there's other topics, we can end this profession news with something positive. Well, you know, the friends were nominated, our friends of the library were nominated for the Colorado Association of Libraries Volunteer of the Year Award mm -hmm. for the state and they won. <gasps> so. Um, and so they will um, accept that award in, at the Cal Conference in September. Yeah, and I'll be there for that. 
Tracy's going for the whole conference, and then the, the board chair and vice chair are planning to attend to accept the award. And then my communications person is writing a press release for that, so we'll get that out in the news, and um, I think that'll be great all around. That's mm -hmm. just good news to share. And maybe yeah, like an so. interview I would love for that. LPM? Yeah, I mean, yeah. The, the press releases help because then that gets hopefully some interest, but yeah, uh, we'll see. But yeah, it'd be great to have something out there about that more than this. I think that's good. Yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Yes. So, to the friends and everyone, the community. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's all I have from library planning news. Well, that's pretty positive, so maybe we should just end it there. Let's do. <laughs> Board comments? Nicole, this is an opportunity to say anything in the world that you want. <laughs> you may not want to tonight, but <laughs> just say. I am I'm sure I'll have plenty of questions. Next time I'll be there in person. <laughs> I've already commanded a third of the calendar. We're good. Um, no, but otherwise, it's like 11 o'clock here now, and I am oh, done. I'm, cri I'm crispy, so I will have to uh, save all my questions for later. Of course. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for hanging in there. Next meeting is the 19th. Yay, yay. We have a better shot of achieving quorum now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. If we don't have to talk about uh, dates, meeting dates beyond that. Next month we'll talk about the fall plan. Right. Yeah. Okay, everybody, we will adjourn at 844.